Once upon a time, Jennifer Lopez was swept off her feet by the charisma of Sean P. Diddy Combs. Their love story seemed like something out of a fairy tale. That I, at that time, was uh, cared very deeply uh, for, for Sean. Well, until he scarred her for life. Everybody was booked, including Jennifer Lopez. They spent the night in the precinct. She was crying a lot. She was a mess. Nobody really wants to be arrested <laughs> or handcuffed or, you know, go through all that kind of stuff. It's a really traumatic experience. Now, everything he did when he was with J-Lo is finally coming out following the ongoing federal investigations against him. Looking at live pictures from the home of Sean Combs, also known as Diddy. HSI is on the scene right now. We also do have video from his home in Los Angeles. HSI Los Angeles is on scene there. But most fans are hoping that Jennifer Lopez will come out to speak up on all the shady things she witnessed while with him. So what exactly is going on? Sean Diddy Combs finds himself thrust back into the public eye as federal agents conduct a sweeping investigation into his affairs. Recent raids on his lavish mansions are just the tip of the iceberg, as authorities delve deeper into Combs' past, including the infamous Club New York shooting of 1999 and the subsequent high-profile trial in 2001. Sources within law enforcement have hinted that these historical events could be revisited as part of the ongoing probe, according to reports from the New York Post. But the scope of the investigation doesn't stop there. Combs is also facing a barrage of accusations related to S.A., with multiple individuals stepping forward to file lawsuits against the rapper in recent months. One particularly explosive lawsuit filed in February alleges that Combs essayed music producer Rodney Lil Rod Jones and coerced him into intimate encounters with S workers. In his lawsuit, Mr. Jones paints a disturbing picture of Combs, accusing him of behavior, including to eat his face and the brandishing of Moreover, Mr. Jones claims that Combs frequently boasted about tampering with the legal proceedings surrounding the 1999 nightclub shooting in which Combs, his then-girlfriend Jennifer Lopez, his bodyguard Anthony Wolf Jones, and rapper Jamal Shine Barrow were all implicated. The nightclub incident, which resulted in injuries to three individuals, led to arrests for all involved parties. However, while Combs and Mr. Jones emerged from the trial unscathed, Barrow, then just 21 years old, was convicted on charges of assault and possession, receiving a hefty 10-year prison sentence. These allegations take a darker turn as Mr. Jones further claims that Combs not only orchestrated the shooting but also bragged openly about manipulating witnesses and jurors to secure his exoneration. Mr. Combs shared that he was responsible for the shooting in the nightclub in New York, he alleged. He said Combs bragged about using Jennifer Lopez to into the club, according to the suit. He shared that artist and Mr. Combs' girlfriend at the time, Jennifer Lopez, aka J. Lo, carried the into the club for him and passed him the after he got into an altercation with another individual, Mr. Jones alleged in the suit. But now Combs, a rapper and music mogul credited with helping to launch the careers of some of the industry's biggest stars, is now facing multiple civil lawsuits accusing him of ST and SA. They got eyes on him in Miami, and the feds are talking to witness after witness. New York defense attorney Michael DiCioaro, who is familiar with the case revealed. They're corroborating everything they can, but everything past and present is on the table with Mr. Diddy right now. Meanwhile, one of the victims of the infamous shooting is willing to go the distance to prove her claim that the rap mogul shot her in the face and got away with it. Natanya Rubin, of one three people hurt in the 1999 incident, wants the bullet fragments taken out of her face for ballistics evidence because she wants the case reopened. I'm willing to have a doctor remove a part of the 9mm bullet in my face so that they can use it as evidence if need be for this trial, and it may cost me my life," Rubin said. Shine Barrow admitted in court he fired a gun that night, but Rubin has insisted for years he unfairly took the fall for Combs. She says she still has nine bullet fragments in her face from the shooting, which happened in the early morning hours on December 27, 1999, at the now-defunct Club New York just off Times Square. Rubin, a mother of three, has stuck with her story since day one. I literally watched them pull out the I had a clear point of view. I mean, for God's sake, I got shot in my nose. I was facing them directly. I watched everything occur and have described it vehemently to all parties involved. 
Rubin said during an earlier appearance on Elizabeth Vargas reports. She's not surprised some still deny her accusation. I give very little credibility to what they're saying because, while everyone else is Monday morning quarterbacking, I am the survivor, she said. I was physically there. Who better to tell you what happened than the person who got shot smack dab in between my eyes? Despite her confidence, Rubin said she's afraid of meeting an untimely demise. I'm a healthy woman, she said. I live a simple, quiet, risk-averse life. So, if I should meet with an untimely demise, it would require be worthy of deep investigation. I understand the peril of what I'm exposing my life to. Jennifer Lopez and Sean Combs embarked on a romantic journey in 1999, sparked by their professional collaboration on Lopez's sensational debut album, On The Six. Their relationship, however, encountered turbulence and eventually came to a halt in 2001. Despite their public appearances together, Lopez remained notably discreet about the intricacies of their romance. It wasn't until later that Lopez divulged the painful truth about their breakup, revealing Combs' infidelity as a significant factor. In a candid interview with British Ella in July 2000, Lopez opened up about a harrowing experience that shook her world, describing it as a complete nightmare and saying, I was scared to death in the car. I had absolutely no idea what was going on. No one did. The aftermath of the shooting incident was not confined to emotional scars alone. Legal battles ensued, amplifying the complexities of an already distressing situation. Notably, in 2008, a staggering lawsuit amounting to $130 million was filed against Combs by one of the victims, seeking reparation for the damages incurred during the incident. Eventually, in 2011, Combs reached a settlement with all three individuals, including the aforementioned victim, the terms of which were kept confidential, as reported by Roy Against this backdrop of tumultuous events, the spotlight now shines once again on Combs as the call to revisit the case resurfaces. Recent federal raids on Combs' residences in Los Angeles and Miami have thrust him into a whirlwind of legal turmoil. Despite his attorney Aaron Dyer characterizing the raids as an excessive display of force by authorities, Combs has maintained his cooperation with the ongoing investigation. Federal officials citing an ongoing investigation have yet to disclose the precise rationale behind the searches leaving many questions unanswered. The call to reopen the case comes as Combs faces mounting legal trouble. Earlier this month, Homeland Security agents swarmed Combs' homes in Los Angeles and Miami in raids that law enforcement sources told The Post were prompted by ST allegations. The federal agents stormed into Diddy's homes one month after Rodney Lil Rod Jones filed an explosive lawsuit claiming the music mogul repeatedly essayed him from September 2022 to November 2023, while Jones was a producer and videographer for the billionaire. Jones compared Combs to Jeffrey Epstein and accused the mogul of his him into having S and forcing him to procure S workers, strippers, and Jones alleged in his suit that Diddy was to eat his face, brandished and most pointedly was often bragging about bribing witnesses and jurors in the case concerning the 1999 NYC nightclub shooting with Shine. Diddy, through attorneys, has denied Jones' allegations. His attorney called the federal raids a witch hunt and slammed the military-level force used. Diddy was backed this week by Glenn Beck, who was working security at the club that night and is now a martial arts expert who works with Deadly Art of Survival magazine. Beck testified at the 2001 trial but told the Post that it appeared the prosecution was hell-bent on nailing Diddy and therefore did not ask him about Barrow aka Shine. He called Jones claims BS and said, We knew Scar, we knew Shine. He was a wild kid from Brooklyn. Beck said that just as the fight was brewing between Diddy and Scar, Shine ran out of the club and returned a few minutes later without being searched by security. That's when the shooting began, he said. Then right after we heard shots ring out, Shine ran out the side door of the club that was attached to a hotel. He came flying out the doors and was immediately arrested by two cops who were outside and had heard the shots inside. Beck also disputed that Lopez could have been used as a mule and said, I remember how well she was dressed that night and she's very slim, she's not going to be hiding a in that outfit. But the 1999 shooting is not the only one likely to be re-examined by federal investigators. Jones also alleged that Diddy lied about his and his son Justin Combs' role in a 2022 shooting at the Chalice Recording Studio in Los Angeles, in which a friend of Justin known only as G was hit twice. Jones claims that he was present at the Chalice shooting, which he said occurred at a recording camp in the studio where Diddy, Justin, and G got into a heated conversation, then moved into a restroom where shots rang out. Photos in Jones' 
Jones' lawsuit show what purportedly was the bloody aftermath of the shooting in the bathroom. Jones said he stepped in to help G, who was bleeding out, and took him outside to an ambulance. Mr. Combs gave strict instructions to inform the police that he had nothing to do with the shooting, Jones alleged. He also forced Mr. Jones to lie to the police by telling them that G was shot standing outside the studio by a drive-by assailant. A police spokesman told NBC News that three people were arrested two months later and accused of a series of throughout LA, including the shooting of G. Police said G had told them he was shot in a struggle with attempted Jones also alleged that Diddy's head of security, Fahim Mohammed, who was once head of security for Michael Jackson, is a powerful fixer with connections in the LAPD, who, Jones claimed, had the power to make people and problems disappear. The lawsuit alleges after that shooting, the documents say explicitly that Mr. Mohammed spoke with the LAPD after G was shot at the recording studio. The LAPD was in the recording studio and witnessed the blood in the restroom, and they went with the bogus claim that the shooting of G occurred outside of the studio. This was all thanks to Mr. Muhammad's connections within law enforcement. So basically they are supposed to call this guy and he will make it disappear. Now Ian Carroll, an independent journalist investigating everything that is going on, explains the connection that Fahim has with Michael Jackson. P. Diddy, Puff Daddy, has been running a blackmail operation very much like Jeffrey Epstein but in the rap and music industry for basically 30 years. It may seem coincidental at first glance. Fahim Muhammad, with his background in security, holds a significant position in the field. His involvement in providing security for Michael Jackson, coupled with the singer's passing under his supervision, raises questions. Particularly, one wonders about Muhammad's qualifications, given the magnitude of his responsibility at just 21 years old. Who exactly is Fahim Muhammad, and what credentials does he bring to the table? Looking into Ian Carroll's investigation sheds some light. In 2008, Fahim graduated from Sacramento State University with a degree in business administration, specializing in real estate and marketing. The timeline, however, raises eyebrows. Michael Jackson's demise in 2009 coincides with Faham's recent college graduation, prompting scrutiny into his suitability for such a crucial role in Jackson's security detail. In any case, Sean P. Diddy has been facing a lot of charges recently. For context, in November, Combs' former longtime partner R&B singer Cassie Ventura accused the music mogul of repeated R and physical AB spanning nearly a decade. In her lawsuit, Ventura, who was signed to Combs' record label, said she was by Mr. Combs in a sample of AB and SA. Ventura cited numerous instances of graphic AB in her lawsuit, including alleged instances where Combs beat and Combs and Ventura settled the lawsuit one day after she filed. We have decided to resolve this matter amicably, Combs said in a statement. I wish Cassie and her family all the best. Love. In another statement, Combs' lawyer, Benjamin Braffman, clarified that the decision to settle is in no way an admission of wrongdoing. He added, Mr. Combs' decision to settle the lawsuit does not in any way undermine his flat-out denial of the claims. He is happy they got to a mutual settlement and wishes Miss Ventura the best. Cassie reportedly added in a statement, statement. I have decided to resolve this matter amicably on terms that I have some level of control. I want to thank my family, fans, and lawyers for their unwavering support. However, two other lawsuits were brought up against the hip-hop mogul. In one lawsuit, Joey Dickerson Neal said she was essayed by Combs in 1991. Dickerson Neal appeared alongside Combs in a music video for the finesse and synquist song Straight From The Soul. Dickerson Neal accused him of slipping an unknown substance into her drink and then essaying her. In her lawsuit, she claimed he shared a recording of the R with other men in the music industry as a form of revenge a third woman accused Combs and R&B singer Aaron Hall of essaying her and a friend at an apartment in the early 1990s. The woman, identified only as Jane Doe, said she and her friend were coerced into being intimate with them. Meanwhile, Diddy has also received a fourth lawsuit and this one might actually be worse than the rest. This time, a woman who was 17 in 2003 has filed a lawsuit against the former billionaire, claiming he and a group of men attacked her inside of a recording studio. In the explosive lawsuit filed on Wednesday, Jane Doe claimed that she met Harvey and the third assailant at a lounge in Detriot. Pierre repeatedly complimented Miss Doe's appearance, saying that she was among other things. He then began talking about his self-described best friend and brother, Diddy. Specifically, Pierre continually stated that Diddy would love to meet Jane Doe. Pierre even called Diddy and put Jane Doe on the line. Diddy told the lady that he would love to meet her and that she should accompany Pierre to New York City in a private jet. Shortly thereafter, Pierre directed her to go with him into the bathroom at the lounge. Once inside the bathroom, Pierre began 
nose candy from what appeared to be an aluminum can. After he finished Pierre suddenly demanded that the young lady conduct S on him. After essaying her, Pierre directed the lady to accompany him, the third assailant and a third member of their group to an airport in Pontiac, Michigan, where Signature, a fixed base operator, had prepared a private jet to take the four of them to New York City. Upon information and belief, the private jet landed at Teterboro Airport. Upon departing the jet, two black SUVs were awaiting the group. Miss Doe got into an SUV with Pierre and the third assailant and the other member of the group went in the second SUV. The SUVs brought the group to Diddy's house recording studio, a recording studio and hangout owned and operated by Diddy and Bad Boy. When Miss Doe arrived, she was escorted into the building, where she distinctly remembers seeing a sign for the company, Technicolor. Upon entering the studio, Miss Doe first encountered Diddy. At the time she arrived, a female recording artist was using the studio as Diddy and her parents watched on. She finished up shortly after Miss Doe arrived and left. While still in the studio section of Diddy's house, Diddy asked the lady to sit on his lap to take a picture. Diddy, Pierre, and the third assailant began to ply Miss Doe, with copious amounts of substances and intoxication. While the evening became a blur, Miss Doe does recall Diddy Pierre and the third assailant hitting on her and touching her inappropriately. In any case, fans are eagerly waiting for J. Lo to comment on what happened in the 1999 shooting. However, others are convinced that Diddy might have forced J. Lo to sign an NDA. She cannot come forward. I wonder if he had her sign an NDA. She was present when he shot the guy in the club that Shine took the rap for which means she knows the truth. Maybe that's why she doesn't come out or speak on anything concerning Diddy, one fan commented. A second fan added, I don't believe J-Lo will speak up against Diddy. She was too scarred to rehash what happened. She has healed and moved on. Anyway, that's it for this video, folks. Bye.